Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I want to welcome you to Mission TV Live. Tonight we have two lively and exciting guests with us, and we'll be talking about the plaintive cry of God. I'll see you on the show. Hello and welcome to Mission TV Live. You know, it's going to be a neat show, but it's a kind of a heart-rending topic that we have this evening. Mm -hmm. And um, first I want to share with you something that we've received in the mail here and we've been blessed by, and I want to share it with you. And that is the Mission 360 magazine. We just got this one today. And it, this is a publication of the General Conference Office of Adventist Mission. And you can sign up. Their website is um, global-mission.org. Or you can see the magazine online at mission360mag.org. Mission360mag.org. So go and check it out. There's a lot of interesting things in here, articles about the church's mission programs in various places. And, and uh, they have a lot of neat, um, neat information in there. And to go along with that, every quarter... Each church in the Adventist church receives this DVD, and there's programs in here that match with the stories in the magazine. So um, just encourage you to check it out, take the DVD, and um, share it with your church members and watch it at home. If, I mean, most churches don't have the time to watch the whole thing during church, but if you can borrow it from your church and watch it at home, you will be blessed. Yeah, and our, our church has a stack of them. Yeah, old uh, ones. And people may be wondering why is a supporting ministry, you know, doing a shameless promotional for the, the Adventist Church's mission program. And the truth is that our program, our mission program, is dependent in many ways on a strong and healthy church program. Um, our Bible workers, you know, they're, they're in reference with the, with the local pastors and they coordinate with them and they work with them. And if they're, if they're weak and if they suffer, we all suffer. Right. But if they're strong, then we can go that much faster. We don't have right. to put in our own infrastructure for our Bible workers. They work together. They work with the church. So um, this is a win-win. So I want to welcome to the show this evening, Pastor Austin Goodwin. Welcome to the show. You're, you're a retired pastor, yes. correct, uh -huh. from the Adventist Church. How long were you pastoring? Over 35 years in the state of Virginia. Okay. And I took early retirement. Now I'm focusing... Uh, directly on missions. On missions, okay, and we'll get more into that in the show. We also have Elder Rich Sutton, who is now the president at Laurel Brook Amen. Academy, right? Yes. Laurel Brook Academy? Yes. All right, and what is your goal there at Laurel Brook Academy? Oh, training missionaries. Training missionaries, Amen. okay. So our topic tonight is the plaintive cry of God. Yes. And we want to start out I want to read the first text. I always start with a text. And the mm. first part of this, this is one of my favorite sections of the scriptures mm. because it shows a picture of God that is so amazing. Mm. And it, it did something to the prophet Isaiah. And I think if it could do the same to all of us, we would be a lot better off. Mm. And we start in verse 1. I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. That's a pretty impressive image. Yeah. I don't have a train, but if I had a train, it probably wouldn't fill a temple. <laughs> no. What is his train? Uh, it's that thing you had on your like wedding dress. Like on a wedding dress. dress. Yeah, it's the, like a, his okay. robe. His thing okay. that came out the back of you. <laughs> the dress. The back of yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he did fly. So those are angels. Okay. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. So the angels are worshiping God yeah. and saying how magnificent he is. And the house is shaking. Right. The so building that's, is shaking. That's a big voice. That's just angels. That's and not that's God. Important. <laughs> yeah. And that's important. And that's so, I mean, this description of God is just so amazing and so awe-inspiring, yeah. and it, it brings reverence 
to your mm -hmm. heart, mm -hmm. you know. I used, I used to think that the angels had a really boring job having to say that over and over again, but I think now that being that close to God, they would, you know, after, every time they finished saying that sentence, they would get a new vision of his grandeur and his mm. glory and yeah. his beauty, and they would say it again. And I think the idea of the post shaking, mm -hmm. those guys were saying it from the heart. The angels were saying it from the heart, glory, glory, glory. Wow. And when is... something is expressed in that way, it penetrates our hearts. Mm. You know, it really, it's got to change you. Yeah. You just don't, you're not the same. <laughs> and I think that's what it's saying. You know, mm. you're, it's vibrating the in, in, inside of us. Wow. With that power. Wow. And we need it today. Yeah. Mm. You know? yeah. So that message is for mm. us. Mm. Right, mm. right. Yeah. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. And it, it's interesting to me, because I was doing a study a few years ago on humility. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. White uses this section, and she talks about how, you know, Isaiah saw all the problems and everything that was going wrong in Israel, and he all thought of it as external to himself. Mm -hmm. You know, the people made these choices, and the nation was doing this. But when he saw this vision of God, he realized it was him, too. Mm -hmm. He was part of the yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he just, woe is me. I mean, mm -hmm. he's just on his knees before God. Mm -hmm. I'm... I'm done, undone. There's nothing left of me. I'm pitiful and, mm -hmm. you know. And then the next two verses so, which you but, took but out. But that's, that's an amazing thing. I mean, true humility only comes after a revelation, revelation of, of a true God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we see God, then we start to gain true mm -hmm. humility. Mm -hmm. and, but what's cool about this, and sorry to interrupt, but I'm so excited about this because it's like, what comes right after his confession of his sin? Hmm. Well, the forgiveness comes from God. Yeah. Because the angel comes with the coal from the mm -hmm. altar uh -huh. and touches his lips. So it's after the confession of his unworthiness that the call for ministry comes. Hmm. Well, he gets, confesses, confesses his unworthiness, he's forgiven, and then the call comes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's after that the Lord says, okay. So God doesn't use perfect people? What do you think? The call usually comes, right, and because of our great need. Mm -hmm. He shows us our need, that call, and mm -hmm. what, what am I going to do about it? What can mm -hmm. I do about it? Mm -hmm. I can't do a thing. Mm -hmm. And that need, that's that repentance to see, you know, do you, do you know me, Lord? <laughs> <laughs> do you know who I am? Uh -huh. And you're calling me? Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. I am undone. What can I do? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm helpless. Yeah. The need right, is tremendous. Right, exactly. Hmm. I'm, I'm undone. I'm helpless. Yes. And then God says... Okay, now Amen. I can call you. Amen. Yeah. And the Lord, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Now you notice I made the, the part where God talks, I made that really small. Mm. Yeah. Because it's, here's, you Do you know, think that God is whispering that call? In my mind, <laughs> well, you listen, look at what he says. Here's a God that's all powerful, that can fill the temple with the train of his garment mm -hmm. and smoke and, you know, shuddering of, of, of stone pillars and With just glory. overwhelming glory. And then he says, I don't have anybody that will go for us, that will go for me. What a sad thing hmm. for omnipotent God to hmm. say. It's almost like he's crying. He's like, you know, I've got all this beauty and I want to share it with people, but I don't have anybody to take it to them. Nobody's willing to go, and so that's why we title this the plaintive cry of God. Who will go from us? And you know, this kind of God, you would think that he would just stand up and say, I want you to go, and I want you to go, and I want you to go, and you don't have any choice, because I got your life in my hands. But he doesn't say that, he says, who will go? Who's willing to go for us? I think Pastor you had a... Uh, you know, I was thinking, uh, surely the, the angels, when they heard that, call of God, who will go for us, can't help but think that probably the angels that were listening to this conversation, they must have raised their hand and said, we'll go, we'll go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he says, no, I, I, I need a person to go. Mm -hmm. I, I need people to go. And so he makes himself mm -hmm. dependent. He almost ties his hands in mm -hmm. a sense, making himself dependent mm -hmm. on each one of us to be his hands, his feet, his voice, his loving touch, mm -hmm. you know, his witnesses, his ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why do you think he does that? Well, I, I think part of it seems to be that, well, I think the main reason is because we need it. Mm -hmm. You know, that we need to, we need to uh, have the, 
the passion for the lost and for, and for uh, the benefit that comes to us as a result of being involved in this process. You mm -hmm. know? So he, we, need that, we need it as much as anything. So does that mean that God is allowing other people to be lost just because he's waiting for, for us to do it? Well, by and large, it seems like he uses people. Sometimes in extreme cases, in a number of cases, we even nowadays, sometimes an angel will appear or a vision will be given, but mm -hmm. usually he uses people. That mm -hmm. seems to be his primary uh, method that he mm -hmm. uses, mm -hmm. individuals. Mm -hmm. And these are sinful people that have been touched by his grace and forgiven. Right. Oh, I, I remember when I got that call, when I was baptized, and I, I felt that in my heart so much to go. And, and that call came, and I went. And I thought everyone would go. Back to your question, mm -hmm. everyone hears that call. Mm -hmm. Everyone that gives their heart to yeah. Jesus Christ hears mm -hmm. it. Now, what do we do with that girl? Mm -hmm. That's what the question mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Are we going to go? Are we going to obey that call yeah. and go forward? Because mm -hmm. yeah, once we actually become a Christian, immediately yes. we are assigned to be a missionary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Locally or globally, somewhere we're to be a missionary. And I know God gives that, yeah. that power and that call. Yeah. What do we do with it? Yeah, I know Mrs. White says that, um, and I'm trying to look it up here, but she says basically that God has given no other, God has no other agency for the promulgation of his truth. No plan B. No plan B. No. Yeah, we're plan A, God has no Amen. plan B. Now, we, we do know of some places where angels show up and they mm -hmm. do stuff. But by and large, mm -hmm. I think what you're saying is unfortunately true. The people will be lost eternally because we didn't do our work. So the exciting part of that is yes. that we have what we do, what we, you know, when we invest our lives and we invest our resources and everything, there's a vital difference. It's really making a difference. Somebody's going to be saved. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to truly enter heaven that wouldn't have been there otherwise. It's not just some kind of blank game that we're playing. Not just some kind of program mm -hmm. that we're doing because, you know, God thinks we might be bored. Mm -hmm. you know, it has a vital importance. It's a, it's a serious subject, what you're just saying, mm. because I've been in Sabbath school class and say, well, if I don't do it, somebody else will. I know God. He will send somebody. Somebody will reach them. No, we all have that sphere mm. of influence. Mm -hmm. right. And if we don't, who will? Exactly. And it's like, why would anyone go if they're always just thinking somehow they'll be reached anyway? Mm. Then yes. there's not really the need. Mm -hmm. that's and that's you, one of the reasons there aren't more people mm -hmm. going, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because somebody else is going to do it. That, that sad phrase that I always hear, Christless um, graves. Mm. You know, they, they go to, to the grave without Jesus Christ. Mm. Because of me? Because of you? Mm. That, mm. that hurts. Mm -hmm. That really yeah. hurts. Hello and welcome to the live. Hi, this is Tim. I called last Yes, hello, Tim. Uh, I'm uh, worried uh, I'm thinking about, I have a lot of options, like you can go to the or go to I Tim, if you're asking Laura Brook Academy, brother, we sure could use you, and then we'll train you as a missionary Amen. and uh, and send you out with a group of young people to uh, that are trained to go uh, build churches and to keep things running. Uh, I remember being in Bolivia where my son Jeff was, and he said, Dad, all I've got is a, is a hammer and a stick. I wish I had more. So come and join us, brother. We'd love to have you. Amen. Yeah, that's where Laurel Brook is located. Thanks for calling, Tim. Amen. All right, bye-bye. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so um, let me ask you, that's Pastor, neat. do you think there's any opportunities for a mechanic-type handyman in Africa? Absolutely. You know, uh, what I'm trying to be doing is, is a passion God's put on my heart as I've traveled from country to country in Africa, is I'm trying to be developing uh, simple methods that we can help the young people to do effective volunteer work for their community, for their church, and then to learn marketable skills mm. that they can use to support themselves. Mm -hmm. Anybody that has any skill can mm -hmm. be used. Mm. Mm. It could be a mechanic, it could be a beekeeper, it could be somebody teaching fish, fish farming, it could mm. be any type of skill. Small mm. engine repair, bicycle repair, uh, cell phone repair, computer repair, any, any skill, mm -hmm. we could use it. Okay, yeah. there you go. So Amen. there's plenty of need. And that's one of the reasons for the show is to show that there are still needs for missionaries. There's Absolutely. still a cry. Mm -hmm. There's a huge cry. Oh, and to watch young people get excited. 
-hmm. You know, we're heading to Mexico in a couple of weeks, you know, uh -huh. and, uh, and they're coming. Yeah. But I, I just don't want them to come. I want them to do. Mm. You know, Laura Brooke is learn through doing, mm. you know, and, uh, and we, when we send them out, they'll know it. That's <laughs> the, and they love learning. Yeah. You know, that's the fun. Is that it's the hands-on. Youth rightly trained. Yes, Amen. Right. Yes. And we'll send them, brother. Absolutely. We'll send them. Huh. Yeah. Well, we've got a little uh, technical difficulty. You want me to go and fix it and I'll be right back? Please do. Okay. <laughs> be right back. <laughs> you can okay. talk about that, though. Okay. Well, the next, the next uh, slide we have on our PowerPoint, or our keynote, is, uh, is kind of in interesting. It's, it's from the very first Mission 360 magazine. And it's a chart of Adventist missionaries from here to there. And this one shows a little close-up of one section. And if you look at the North American division, which is the second line on this chart, you can see that we have 40 missionaries from other parts of the world serving in North America. But we only have 235 missionaries from North America serving elsewhere in the world. Hmm. Do you think that's enough? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. No. Is that, I think that's 0.009% of the population or of the Adventist church membership. I think that's what John's. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Point oh oh nine percent. That's really, mm -hmm. really sickening, actually. Yeah. And that doesn't include. This is church missionaries. This is from the Adventist Church. You know mm. the GC. Mm -hmm. So it's not supporting missionary. You know supporting ministries. It's not including any of us. You mm -hmm. know. So, but still, if we add all the supporting ministries, mm -hmm. maybe a thousand. Well, you know, I think of what John's opening uh, remarks were about the church and about the magazine and how you guys are an independent ministry. We are all part of the church. Mm -hmm. right. We are all <laughs> in, right. in that we're hub. church members. Oh, we yeah. are. And so uh, without the church, who are we? We are nothing. Mm -hmm. We are Jesus Christ in, in, in working clothes, if you want to say. Mm -hmm. We are the, the front mm -hmm. lines. But that number is, uh, is alarming to me personally. Mm -hmm. um, I really want, just, just for Laura Brooke alone, to be able to train and, and send out those missionaries. I want to win more souls in my older age than I ever did when I was younger. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'm going to do it through Laura Brock. <laughs> to train these kids. Train send them the out. People. And then I'll be young. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep younger. I'm going to be younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? By who God is. That's like the pe pebbles in the pond. It you know, is. the ripples. And if you train one, and that one trains yeah. one, and that yeah. one, you yeah. know, and if you're training 30 a year, yes. you know, how yes. big are the ripples going to get how fast, yeah. you know? And everyone we have an opportunity to share with, to share the call with, mm -hmm. if they get involved, if they go, then the ripples get wider and wider and more people will know. Mm -hmm. And the need is tremendous. Like this young man, Tim, that called. I want to go to Belize. I want to go. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we need to send you trained, you know. And not only trained as a mechanic, I want to teach you how to be a Bible worker, mm -hmm. how to win souls, how to actually see people go into the, the baptismal tank and call for that. You know, he called you know? us last week. Did he? And he's been telling friends. You know, that he's getting involved in missions, and he's going to be Amen. a missionary. Amen. And so now there's a couple of other young people in the church that are going, hey, I want to be a missionary. Hmm. I want to be a missionary. So he's already so, having the ripple yeah. effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's awesome. really neat. It's really neat. You know, one interesting thing is that it seems to be that, that um, it's a tendency for us to have others do for us what we should be doing ourselves. You know. You know, we may give an offering, we, we, we do whatever, and we think, well, that person is going to do it. But God calls each one of us yes. to become involved. Now, that doesn't mean all of us can go, but all of us can in some way become supportive of the mission that Jesus has given us. And I, I, I seem, it seems to me that what our, what our goal should be is to uh, run everything by this acid test that we do individually, and that we do collectively as churches or hospitals or whatever our Christian institutions might mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. And that is, is what I am doing significantly contributing toward fulfilling the Gospel Commission? If it's not, someone else may have time to do it, but I don't have time. Mm -hmm. You see, our priorities must be fulfilling the commission, completing mm -hmm. the mission Jesus began. That must be what controls everything that we do. Oh, amen. Yes. And I think if we start thinking this way and say, Lord, as, as, as Isaiah said, I'm available. Mm -hmm. That's what he asks. He, you know, he, just, he, he doesn't say you have to have a degree or you have to have a lot of money or whatever it is. It's just our availability. That's all he wants. 
and then he will do what's necessary. Welcome back, dear. Hi, it's mm -hmm. good to be back. Technical problems resolved? Yeah, Roku is streaming. Everything okay, is fine. You know, along with your, your thought that I just don't want to lose that before you go, mm -hmm. but right. I, I think of, would, would the community know if your church was gone? Would the community mm -hmm. have any idea you weren't even there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's missionaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, if you're a missionary, your church will, wow. your, your community would know mm -hmm. you're missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. But you know what? Most communities would even miss us mm -hmm. because we're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So we want to be missionaries mm -hmm. right. where, the, where we can help that community. Mm -hmm. where, where, where we're gone, Dorcas was a great example. They missed her. Mm -hmm. Would they miss me? No. Mm. But, but I, thought, I thought church was all about going to a place where you can sit down and have a nice, uh, quiet, um, you Get know. Get fed? Yeah, you listen to a, a message. Mm -hmm. Some people feel that way. Some yeah. people feel yeah. that way. But I don't, I don't see it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, describe to you me. Uh, well, you know, I kind of see church as being a time. It is a time we come for fellowship and worship. Uh -huh. But it's also a time for us to be trained and to be inspired and to be equipped within this overall setting of the church. May not always on our worship time, but sometimes we must be trained, equipped, and we must be mobilized mm -hmm. so that we go out effectively to the mission field that surrounds us. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I, I, you know, I can't help but feel that sometimes we, we unfortunately don't listen to the steps that Jesus gave. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he suggested that, he, he said that they should begin in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and then they would move on to Judea, mm -hmm. and then to Samaria, mm -hmm. and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. Mm -hmm. And that was for every one of us. Mm -hmm. In other words, like John Wesley said, the world is my parish. Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe that's true for every one of us. That doesn't mean, again, we can all go, but we can all in some way facilitate Be that. involved. Mm -hmm. Help to facilitate that mm -hmm. commission. Now yeah. we got a we got a question from a viewer. Okay. I just wanted to interject this at this point. Now in the in chapters one through five of Isaiah, because there's some some of Isaiah before he had the vision. Mm. Yes. So in chapters one through five of Isaiah, they're asking, didn't Isaiah sincerely believe he was already going for God before he had this vision in chapter six? Wasn't he sincerely working for God before that? I've always felt that he was. Mm. He did. He felt that until mm. God showed him our, his true colors <laughs> of his mm. need. Mm. And that's us as a church. We have lots of programs. Mm. And, and when that program is done, we have another program. Mm. But the programs always never actually do. Mm. They're just training. We're getting fatter and fatter and fatter. Mm. But we're not actually doing. Where God is saying here, we're undone. Who am I going to send? Who will go for me? Mm -hmm. You guys are trained. You're ready to go. Isaiah was ready. Mm. But he wasn't going. Mm. Mm -hmm. We never go. Mm. We never do it. Mm. Mm. So you think he was sincere and he thought I do. he was when serving I read God that, the I'm, whole I'm time. agreeing with that, with the caller. Okay. You know, the, he saw who he was, mm. you know, and he was, he was okay mm. until God showed him his who need. Who he really was. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you, and, you, and you look at this. I mean, I don't, I don't forget your, what your statement mm. was. But, I mean, he, you, Jesus chose all these disciples. None of them were converted, but they were willing. Yes. And as they went, and as they continued mm -hmm. to grow, mm -hmm. then later they were converted. Mm -hmm. You know, even Peter. Peter's, you know, three and a half years with Jesus, and, he's, and Jesus is saying, when you are converted, yeah. feed my mm -hmm. sheep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and so Christ takes what we offer yeah. him, even if it's not perfect mm -hmm. and fully complete. And he deepens that, and he mm -hmm. grows it, and, he, and as long as we hang on to him, and don't yes. give up, like Thomas, I mean, like Judas did, mm -hmm. you know? He could, I think Thomas could have repented. You mean and Judas. Been, Judas. Judas could have repented <laughs> and been converted, <laughs> even after yeah. betraying Jesus. Yes. Yeah. But he let go. He thought it was too late. Pride. Yeah. Pride. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is, it, is, it, is what uh, our great need, is our great need to, to catch this vision of the glory of God, mm. is that what our great need is? It, from that story, at least, it seems like maybe that really is what, each of us need is to get a clearer picture of God mm -hmm. and, and maybe a clearer picture of His passion for, for, mm -hmm. you know, for saving souls, yeah. then that could trigger mm -hmm. a, a response in our hearts as mm -hmm. well. Yes, Because by beholding we are changed. Mm -hmm. So that would change our, the way we witness also. I, I mean, I think a lot of t uh, times I've thought of that as just changing our character but I mean, I guess it is a character change for people to actually get out there mm -hmm. and 
do something. Well, you've got, what, what is character? Character is made up of thoughts and feelings. So when we look at Christ, we see his beauty. Mm -hmm. That becomes, it, it affects our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that affects our feelings. So Christ mm -hmm. flowing in you, the spirit of Christ mm -hmm. flowing in you mm -hmm. is a missionary spirit. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at the fact that we're not involved with missions, that means that, I mean, that indicates that we don't have the spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. So if we want missions mm -hmm. in our lives, if, if we're looking and saying, yeah, I'd like to do missions, but I don't know, it's not really me. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we need more of the spirit of Christ, which is looking at Christ. Mm -hmm. Look at Christ by beholding you become mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the vital thing in our Christian experience is to like have that connection and always the indwelling uh, and the filling up of the Spirit. Sure. Yeah. And if we don't have that, then it's meaningless. But that's available. I yeah. mean, don't you think, mm -hmm. Pastor? Don't you think Christ is available for us to partake of? Absolutely. At any time? But you know, another thing that comes from my mind here is the, is that God can take us with very little, mm -hmm. what we might say, formal preparation for being a missionary and use us effectively. Amen. I think of the woman at the well. She never went to seminary or she never had any in-depth training, training or Bible, right? about the Bible. Never had a Bible study except a brief encounter with Jesus. But once she had that spark, she went as one of the most effective evangelists of all time. Mm. You know, she went into that city, people came out, asked mm -hmm. Jesus to stay for two days, and, and many came to faith in Christ. Now, the disciples had gone in and out, never said boo to anybody about Jesus, mm -hmm. but when she went back, she had something to tell. Mm -hmm. And then I think of the demoniacs, mm. you know, how the, they had a brief encounter with Jesus, their lives had been changed, and they wanted to go with Jesus so badly, they wanted to just be around him. He says, no, you go home and tell what great things God has done for you. And they did. And when he, Jesus came back to the area, those 10 cities, the people were coming out in droves to see him. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take a lot of necessary formal training, but it takes availability and filling of God's spirit, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think it takes being actually excited about it. Mm -hmm. which happens mm -hmm. if, but I mean like that woman, it's like you said, she got the spark. Mm -hmm. And I think that is like a vital thing to actually have that spark and be excited about. I mean, cause anyone, any good salesperson, they need to hopefully believe in what they're selling. You know, <laughs> yeah. at least some, some people are really good at lying, but you know, <laughs> I, I know for, for selling Christ. Exactly. Yeah. You know. But I think, you know, and I've just been thinking about that a lot in my life and it really does come down to seeing how good God is to us personally, mm. because mm. if we don't apply it to ourselves personally, how can we really be excited about it? Like mm. we might believe it's true, mm -hmm. but there's a difference between believing it's true. And then as Ellen White says, um, applying the merits of Christ to ourselves. Right. And I think right. that that is vital for us to do. Yeah. Otherwise we won't have that spark. And, and that's exactly what Christ is saying is, you know, eat my flesh, eat, drink my blood, mm -hmm. which is the word. We embrace it as if it mm -hmm. was our very life. Mm -hmm. And, and that with an affectionate embrace, appreciative of mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. Christ did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a young man in Laurel Brook. His name is Sammy. He's from Switzerland. Uh -huh. He hasn't been home in four years. Mm. Wow. And uh, he said, Rich, I couldn't go home. Mm -hmm. I was a bad boy when I came here. His, uh, his grandfather was, was the president of OCI at the time. Oh. And he encouraged him to come to Laurel Brook. Mm -hmm. And he said, after four years, now he's graduating this year. Mm -hmm. What a man of God. Mm -hmm. The young man. Mm -hmm. She says, youth rightly trained. What an army. Mm -hmm. We will make up that army of, of, of soldiers for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think of Sammy now. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going back to Switzerland, but he's changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's going back for Jesus Christ. That's so and neat. he's going to share it. He's giving me all kinds of phone numbers to call. Rich, this guy will make a great task force worker. Bring him into Laura Brook. Mm -hmm. He believes in the change that Jesus Christ yeah. can do. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about. Right. He's you know? lived it. He's lived it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's Sammy. He's going back to Switzerland. Amen. But he's going to set it on fire. Mm -hmm. That's you know? awesome. Yay. Amen. <laughs> These youth, rightly trained. They're going. Yeah, right. You know they're going to do right. it. And this is what God prophesies in Joel chapter 2. Yes. This is his great and dreadful army, army yeah. of the Lord, where they will walk in step. They will not thrust each other. And mm -hmm. I see that happening. You know, you travel mm -hmm. around the world and you find someone that's on fire for Christ. It's like, phew, just yes. automatically just help each other out. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's happening. Mm -hmm. And we want our kids to be like the Mormons. 
going out two by two like that. I mean, they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are the Adventists in that light? John's always yeah. talking about the Mormons. Is it? Yes. Well, we want to be more. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we got a message. It's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. So let's, let's train these kids. Yeah. Let's put them to Africa. Yeah. They want to go, by the way. They'll yeah. go. Yeah. If we train them, they'll go. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we as parents, you know, we can set up a culture where we have the expectation that they should go, that yeah. they will go, rather than, oh, you want to go serve overseas? What's well, wrong with you? Are you sure you want to do that? You do that for six months, you know. Yeah, but I mean, like, I bought my shoes from a Mormon guy. Uh -huh. And when he was growing up, if he earned $100 mowing lawns, he would put 10% for tithe and then split the other half and put that half towards his mission fund. Mm -hmm. huh. Uh -huh. So when he was wow. old enough, he financed himself. Oh, man. That's yeah. the culture. No, that's that's the dedication. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's invested. You know, with uh, Jeff's, my son, uh -huh. and his wife, uh -huh. um, you look at their library when they were kids, and it's all mission books. Mm -hmm. Those parents were gearing those kids to be missionaries before they were almost hatched, if you want to say. <laughs> yeah. And I look at the Sutton family, and we're reading these mission story books, you know? Uh -huh. And so all our kids, what are they? Well, they're missionaries. How did that happen? Huh, what a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They're geared that came for out it. of the blue. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And that's us as parents. Right. We're gearing that. We're, right. we're, you know, and I look at Jeff and Fauna saying, they got both sets of parents pushing them on. What's their chances of being successful? They're very high, <laughs> really you successful. know, and they are. And so very that's successful. us. That's us. Yeah. We're, we may be back here. Maybe we can't go, but we can send those books. We can make sure our grandkids got those books. We can, you know, educate them in that light of we're missionaries. Yes. You know? Yes, and I, I love, I love um, being in the mission field because you get to hang out with missionaries. Yeah. And there's something special about the missionary that's self-sacrificing, uh -huh. willing to sacrifice for Christ. Mm -hmm. It's got a little spark of joy and fire and enthusiasm that you don't normally get. Mm -hmm. And you know, once, yeah. once people taste this, <laughs> I, I, I have this yeah, friend, tell me your story, uh, huh? Pastor Wilson, uh -huh. just getting ready, he's going to fly back to Malawi this Wednesday, him and his wife. He's almost 75. But this man is working tirelessly mm. for building up God's kingdom and mission work. Mm. And I said, man alive, you know. This has been such an inspiration to me. Last year when I was over there and met with him, with a group, a group of us met with him. It was just so inspiring. Mm. Mm. You know, many people at that age, you know, they're relaxing, traveling, mm -hmm. whatever, you know. But they're focused on, on helping to complete this mission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Is he, yeah. is he sad? Is he really depressed? Oh, he's so excited all the time about, <laughs> about doing God's work. So he's, <laughs> he's on fire. Well, that's what we've noticed. It's the people, the people that are involved are excited. Mm -hmm. They're happy. They're joyful. They're, you know, like you. What about being a missionary? Why aren't you a missionary? Where are you going? You know, like the questions you were asking us the other day when you came here the first time. Well, where have you been? Where are you going? When are you going? You know, those kinds of questions because... You want to share that you do. fun yeah. and that joy that comes from it. And it's uh -huh. not that you never see anything sad. And it's not that you never see suffering. Right. Because you do. You see a lot of it right. out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the joy that comes from knowing that you told someone. Mm. You were part of telling someone that there's hope. Mm. And there's a future. And there's a blessing. And there's salvation. Mm. You, know? you know, one of the most right. memorable experiences of my life was in India. Uh, several years ago when my pastor friend took me to a village that never in the history of the village had ever heard about Jesus Christ. Mm. Mm. And he says, can you preach for 10 minutes? Just give a 10 minute talk. Mm. It's like, what do you say? In 10 minutes. To somebody that's never heard mm. about Jesus. A village, a whole mm. village. And I'm told there's over 450,000 of those villages yeah. that have mm. never heard the name of Jesus Christ. Mm in India alone. And it's like some people don't think there's needs in the mission field. Don't know. They're not aware because the call's mm. not being made. Pastor, the call's not being made mm. for mm. our church members to become missionaries. Do you think that should change? Well, you know, I think one of the best ways for that to change is for people to experience in some way, mm. personally. Mm. It's, it's easy for me to tell you something but, but, or tell you about something, you know, say this is wonderful, let's describe it for you, but until you taste it, until you experience it, mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't get through. Mm. So the more we can encourage people to become involved in some way, an active way in, in mission, I think it, where they actually experience it will make a difference. Right. I remember once being in Mexico and things didn't go real well. We got kind of sick and, and uh, I... I didn't know how to contact the folks back home. You know, we're in the rural areas, and, and uh, 
as, as I was bringing the people to the hospitals and things, it was really getting scary for me personally. Mm. And uh, so it, then it started slipping my mind, not contacting those folks at home. Mm. And then I got a phone call from one of the, the, uh, the grandmothers, if you want to say, from one of the folks that were there. She says, Rich, keep, keep us informed, the ones that are staying by the stuff. We can't go with you, mm. but they sure support me. Mm. And I thought about that with David, you know, and, and he always, he took it and he, and he shared it with mm. those people that, Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. They couldn't actually go. But when they, they went so, to the battle. Yes, yeah. but they stayed by the stuff. Mm -hmm. We need those people. Yes. The logistics of missionary work is tremendous. Mm. And we need those folks that are, maybe they can't Back up or, yes. you know, so to speak. And that's Support. what the church is Prayer. for us. Yeah. It, you, you separate us from the Seventh-day Adventist church and what are we? Nothing, you mm. know? Mm. We all need to be together, all pushing forward to that one goal of Jesus mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, it sounds crazy, but it works. Mm -hmm. and, and by God's grace, this is going forward. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're going to be to that 55,000, brother, you know, <laughs> <Amen>. and more. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's going to happen. You know, if we had even 10% of our church members going as missionaries, I don't think that's too many. Do you? No. Too no. many? 10%. That's 100,000 no, in people. We I know, send, a tithe of people. Yeah, a tithe of our people. If we send a tithe of our people from the North American church, that'd be 100,000. You ever go to Southern and watch those kids bring in those flags? You know, all those kids, that, that, that whole sanctuary is full of these mm. kids going out to be missionaries. It's exciting times that mm. we're living in. They're going, and they're not counting the cost. They're not saying, well, it's too much money. It's just, they're going. Mm. And we need more of that yes. and more and more. Yes. Mm. But I believe as we get on fire as a church yeah. and we start training them, Enable them, give him right. the support, the help. Yeah. It's going. Mm -hmm. You know, we love, we love being overseas in Asia, doing the work, front line, hands on, breaking new ground. So exciting. But uh, a few years ago, God says, I want my church involved. I know. He wants his church involved. Mm -hmm. So we had to come back and we're doing this. And this is, this is tough work, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, trying to change a culture. Trying to change a mindset. It's kind of harder than going to the mission field. It that is. mission field. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. there's hard things over there too, but yeah. This, this is, is harder is in hard. a different way, probably. In a different way, yeah. You see less, this, I mean, there it's just like people are hungry for the gospel, yeah. you know. Yeah, in this, in this environment, it's like my worst fear of ministering in this environment because it's ministering to my culture, mm -hmm. to people that I know, they're like me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? And I know me. I'm very resistant to the to a call to the Holy Spirit in this environment. I'm trained to change. Yeah, to change mm -hmm. because I got my routine, I got yes. my plan, right. everything's laid out. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but God wants God loves this church. Mm -hmm. And he has he's poured more resources into this church. You know, I was thinking this morning, the founders of this church, can you imagine? Oh. I mean, they dreamed of having the resources that we have today. Mm -hmm. And they prayed. They probably prayed for hours and weeks and months and years and sacrificed so that we and prayed, God, please send resources to your church. And so he did. Mm -hmm. And so what do we do with it? We enjoy it. Mm -hmm. We use it for ourselves. Yeah. Can you imagine how they would feel if they were awake today and see what we're doing with the resources they were praying mm -hmm. so hard for? Mm -hmm. And the countless millions, billions, going without a knowledge of God. I think but we can make a change now. It's not too late. No. The door mm -hmm. of repentance is open. The door of change is open. And I think that we should make a, a concerted call to all the people that we, that we know to say, hey, missions needs you. Mm -hmm. Africa needs, needs you. Mm -hmm. Mexico, South America needs you. Asia needs you. Asia, you know, 57% of the world's population. The final frontier of the gospel. 6,000 languages still have no Adventist work in them. Mm. 6,000 mm. people groups. 2,000 you know, of them are, are in India alone. I watched Jeff two years ago uh -huh. with that machete. And he brought that 100 acres and he's sitting there cutting out that, that school out of the you know, jungle. <laughs> and here, I'm in Laurel Brook. And it's been 60 years and we have all the buildings. Mm -hmm. We have everything all in place. You know, and here's Jeff. He's just by the sweat of his brow. Yes. And yeah, and here I am, the dad. I'm, I just, I'm just you at inherited Lord. It. Everything is here. 
Wow. You know? Wow. Is God good? Yeah. I, was, I was on my way to hit work with Jeff, uh -huh. and the call came to go to Laura Brooke. Hmm. And, no, no, Lord, I, I'm, I'm a missionary. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm going over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going over. Yeah. But no, God says, no, no. I want mm -hmm. you at Laura Brooke to train wow. missionaries. Mm -hmm. So I understand your call of your heart. Mm -hmm. I want to be in Belize. Mm -hmm. I want to be building those churches in Mexico. Uh -huh. But he said, no, I want mm -hmm. you training these wow. kids. Because it's a matter of multiplying. It is. You know, it you is. can be more effective. You're just one person. If you know, but if you can, as a result, even hundreds of other people mm. go. Jeff was so excited, and I told him I'm not coming. He goes, Dad, <laughs> Dad, we can train North America. Yeah. yeah, it's so and awesome. So, it is, it is, and that's, that's our goal, is, yeah. is a, as a church, as a people. Yeah. And uh, Laura Book is ready, and I know there's a lot of other academies, amen, mm -hmm. all across yeah. the United States that are ready to train these, mm -hmm. these youth. You know, one of the things I'm seeing, too, is I travel in Africa particularly, where I've been focusing is that there are so many young people internationally mm. that are available. Mm. The problem is, is that usually they don't have any resources. No. When I, when I work with young people, about 300 young people at Lunjika Mission this last year, that's in the northern part of Malawi, there were, there were around 20 of them that indicated that they really wanted to get involved in, in, in evangelism, guys and girls together. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, they're available, but we need to get resources, we need to get simple training to them so that they can also help to fulfill this mission. Yeah. The mission, you know, mm -hmm. using local young people and, mm -hmm. and, and adults as well right. all around the world is also a big important mm -hmm. part of right. this. You know. Networking, and that's what these folks are doing. Helping us network, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Did you say you had the, the young man last week from Cuba? Mm-hmm. Well, that's exciting. It was fun <laughs> just to be at ASI and talk with him. Yeah. And we're going to go over yeah. and help him, you know. Nice. And yeah. he needs some that's buildings. We're going to roll out that machine and send them over, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Want, so networking, being here, is, is a tremendous thing. Yeah. If people know the need, they'll help if they only knew. Well, I'm, I'm excited about your, I mean, you, you were a pastor for 35 years and then you got in, involved with missions. I grew up in the mission field as a child, came back to this country, became a pastor, but then kind of got into the routine of, you know, business as usual. And then went to South America to visit our three daughters, my wife and I, my son, went down to visit our three daughters who were doing mission work down there for a volunteer missionary uh, for school year, mm -hmm. volunteers from Southern Adventist University. While we were there, it's just, it wasn't a voice, but it was a strong impression that I needed to get involved in missions. So that following July 2004, I started going back as much as I could, but as a pastor, I was limited. Mm -hmm. Now that I've taken early retirement, I can focus full time on this. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it's, it's just, um, it's a priority. I could kind of kick myself for those 30 years, 30 plus years, or about 30 some years that I kind of lost, but I, I feel like God's still giving me an opportunity to have a small part, you know, in some way to make a difference for His kingdom. Mm -hmm. So that's my passion now. That's what I want to be involved in as long as I'm able. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and it's brought yeah. a lot of joy into your life, hasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Nothing like it. Mm -hmm. Nothing yeah. like it. We've got a short video here that I'd like to, to share. It's just a few seconds long, but here's, here's a pastor uh, in Bangkok, and he is uh, crying out for... Some, for people to help. Hmm. And he's wondering where, where are the people? And so we're just gonna play this here, just a short one. I say, you know, God, why aren't there more? Why aren't there more people who give a care about sharing and living a message of hope? And no. so we never got back to, we never got the to- The last few verses. Isaiah's response. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Man, this call. Mm -hmm. And so he says, after God makes this plaintive cry, who will go for me? Who can I send? And he said, send someone else, please. <laughs> <laughs> Here am I. No, thankfully, Isaiah didn't say that. Amen. But many times we do. Yeah. Many yeah. times we do. Yeah. But thankfully, Isaiah said, well, I've got another video to show. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just a really quick one. Because of send, sending someone else. Yes, and, and that's a lot of times we say, well, if I don't go, somebody else will go. Mm -hmm. And this and video talked about talks about that. I remember one day I was talking to John and I kind of started arguing with him because I said, well, I know that if I don't go, God will send somebody else. But talking to John, I realized that that's not the case. There's some work that I have to do. There's some people that I have to save. 
that if I don't do it, nobody will do it. And I think that's, that's what Mission TV is doing, is telling the people that the, there are many needs out there in the mission field, and that each one of us have and a specific role to play in this world and to save many people. So we all have to do something. We all have to be involved in missions, either going or sending or, or helping people or praying. You have definitely to be a missionary. Okay, so he actually said, Here am I, send me. So he answered the Lord by giving himself. And look what God did with him. Mm -hmm. This man that was. And you know, it wasn't an mission, easy mission field he went into. We <laughs> yeah. know from the um, results, his mission field was difficult. Eventually, he was sawn in two. Mm -hmm. His his way of his death, mm. the king had him sawn in two. But but that that did not keep him from from embarking on that mission, even mm. though he knew it would be a difficult mission. Mm. He was willing to go. So you think we shouldn't let anything stand in the way then? Evidently not, not if God calls. I remember when Jeff was a first missionary down in, uh, in uh, Venezuela, mm -hmm. and we built a house for Bob Norton and a hangar for Bob. Mm -hmm. you know, it was a joy to work with that guy, you know, mm -hmm. and he had a, a zeal for life, mm -hmm. and then, then he came up missing, you know, and you wonder, what happened, mm -hmm. you know? Well, did the work stop? No, mm -hmm. it's going on, mm -hmm. you know? And, and the same thing with with uh, Bob Roberts with the plane crash a couple, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That man's desire was tremendous to, to, mm -hmm. to do God's work. And we, as we know, Gary Roberts, he's, and he's still flying in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. Those things that, that happen, like with Isaiah, it puts fuel to me, brother, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. When we go to, to Mexico and they say, how dangerous and you're gonna die and all these things. Mm -hmm. I'll only die, what? If, if my time is up, you know? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's ready. yes. And Paul wasn't afraid. Mm. He would go back in those cities that, that stoned him. I mean, mm. that takes courage. I don't know if mm -hmm. I'd do that, brother. I might move on to the next one, you know. <laughs> but he, it, it's just fuel mm. for, for the, mar the martyr's death is fuel. And that's the way we are today. That's what I know? keep praying, you know, after we heard about Bob Roberts, mm -hmm. the plane crash. I just started praying, Lord, raise up more pilots. Raise up yes. more people that will do the dental work and the you know, the medical work that he was helping with and, you know, just raise up more people that have that care, you know, mm -hmm. and, and maybe this is what it takes is somebody that has been doing it their whole life, mm -hmm. dying doing it mm -hmm. for other people here to go, wow, it's that important to somebody? Maybe it and should it be is. important to me. You I know? remember a young man, I just, now I'm going to, can I put a plug in for Heritage Academy just mm -hmm. over sure. the hill from us, you know? Mm -hmm. They have a flight program, and uh, there's a young man by Luke, and I was up there uh, babysitting, or you can't babysit a 14-year-old, but just, just staying with <laughs> young her over. Person yeah, there you go. And, uh, <laughs> and Luke called me on the phone and says, hey, come on down to the chapel, I want to talk to you. And, uh, and so he's just finishing his flight, he's going to go and get his AMP license, you know, and he says, Rich, I feel the world pulling me this way and God pulling me this way. Mm -hmm. I said, brother, go be a missionary. Amen. <laughs> just, yeah. just go, Luke. Amen. It'll be. And so he's, he's, he's signing up for the course. He's going to go be, get his AMP. He says, Rich, I'm going to go this way. Can I go to Mexico with you, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come on and come. <laughs> but, you know, these young people are feeling this. Mm. But yeah. the Bob Roberts, the, the, the Mr. Norton says, as they've given their lives, you know, for this mission, mm -hmm. it's real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it worth dying for? Mm. You bet it is. Mm. Jesus it is. died for it. Amen. 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 Jesus, died yeah, Jesus was not afraid to, to make that ultimate sacrifice, no. you know, mm. for the, completing the mission that he mm. was given. You think about it, it's a package deal. It is. It's a package deal. Whether you live for God or whether you die for God, you have eternal life ahead of you. And when you die for God, it's the highest honor. Because after, after Jesus comes, after the second coming, There'll never be another chance in the entire eternity mm -hmm. where you can suffer for Christ and have that, dis that honor and that distinction, to suffer for somebody that suffered for you. You That's can't a, participate in his sufferings. Yeah. And it says that the, this m momentary light suffering that we endure works for us a greater weight of glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it develops something in us, in our character, in our life, that we can experience more joy. Mm -hmm. See. And I, I believe that suffering in God, in Christ, 
is the gateway to joy. Mm -hmm. and, Amen. And the reason we don't have much joy in our churches is we haven't had a lot of suffering. No. Because we haven't, we haven't allowed him to take us into that, mm -hmm. into that place. Mm. It's like Jesus, you know, he's, in, in spite of all he was going through, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. See, the joy was the benefits that those would receive who received salvation. Mm. Yeah. That was what kept him going. That's what kept him focused and helped him to go through that terrible experience, right. was knowing that we were going to be in with him. So it, it inspired him to make that uh, great sacrifice that yeah. he did. Yeah, and when we sacrifice for Christ, we can have the confidence that our sacrifice is not in vain. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. somebody that's, that's sacrificing to get a Ferrari or get, mm -hmm. a, you know, get the next rung up in, in the job market, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of vain sacrifice. You know, you just get a little nicer car, a little nicer house, and that's about it. It's vain. But with God, when you make a sacrifice, it's going to result in something. Mm -hmm. It's not vain. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, we've got another comment from okay. some viewers. All right. Actually, it's the same viewers that commented or asked the question earlier. And this is, why does Isaiah 6 and Jeremiah 1 tell of God doing a deep and thorough cleansing of the lips, which essentially mm -hmm. is the heart? And their question, additional question is, isn't it because God wants to prepare his willing and going messengers to fulfill a humanly impossible mission? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is described in Isaiah 6, verse 9 and following. In other mm -hmm. words, who is willing to keep going all the way with God? Mm -hmm. So Well, two things. Number one, that's why we call our missions camp meetings that we do, mm -hmm. call them faith camps. Yes. Because you can't really attack anything like world evangelization without a little bit of faith. <laughs> a little. <laughs> <laughs> and the other part is the abiding in the tree. I'm the vine, you're the branches. When you abide in the tree, there's that vital life dependent connection where you take in his life, mm -hmm. you take in his spirit, you take mm -hmm. in his, his vital energy. And that's the only way that any fruit can ever happen. And a lot of times I find myself rooted in the earth of self with all my branches surrounding Christ and a lot of leaves, and I look good, but there's no fruit. <laughs> um, and it's all self. it's not grafted. There's exactly. It's so so taking, taking my, my, the source of my life and, and the decision-making of my life and I put it into Christ. And I walk in His righteousness and I connect with Him and I expect Him. Yes. To fill, to fill me, and then and then it starts to happen, mm. and it starts to change, and I start to want other people to know about this amazing Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, my son-in-law um, did a uh, a sermon for us in Mexico, uh -huh. and a as he was preaching there, he said to uh, to to us, mm -hmm. and I, I, especially the dad, I was listening very closely, mm -hmm. and he says, "What if I was faithful to Katie, your daughter, seventy-five percent of the time? Would that be all <laughs> <Yeah>. right?" <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's about what I was going to do. I'm going to thrash you, boy. You know? Oh, it's okay, okay, okay. What about 80? How about 90? How about 99? 99, you know, 99 is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. You know, brother, it's still not acceptable. You know, right. I, I want the 100%. Mm -hmm. but what about God? That's why he keeps talking about us at, with the vine, with the branches, with these thoughts. Mm -hmm. How much can we give God? Mm -hmm. How much is, is he trustworthy? Mm -hmm. Is he? Mm -hmm. He is. He's 100% trustworthy, by the way, mm -hmm. or 110. Amen. You know, but as a church, as we look at this, that, that number that right. you had, right. we, we say it with our lips. Yes. That's why we need that coal, because mm. it's not true. Mm. What we're saying is not what we really are doing and believe. So what this person is saying is that a divine coal needs to happen to us. Yes, and it happens every day. Mm. Mm. You can't go, when I was canvassing 30 years ago, you know, I thought, man, I'm it. Well, can I live on that mm. now? Can I go back to those days and say, oh, I was holy then? I, it just carries over? <laughs> I was it, holy then. You know? <laughs> no. No. What about yesterday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. It's yeah. today. Amen? It's mm -hmm. this it's, moment. Yeah. Right. It's today. Right. We're missionaries today. Right. I decided that this morning. And we, a lot of times I think we think that it, we have to, you know, it's really hard for Christ to come in and fill us with the Spirit. But is it hard for Christ to do that? To fill us with the Spirit? Mm-mm. No, he wants it to be like the breath that we breathe, the air that we breathe that surrounds us. He wants us to breathe into that heavenly atmosphere. Uh -huh. yeah. mm. But is that a distant thing? Is that something that's going to happen no. sometime in the future? Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. 
So then, then how do we get that? Well, I think you know, the story here with, with Isaiah gives us some of the steps there that we need to, first of all, recognize God and His, his greatness, His goodness, His glory, mm. how, how, how sinful and far short of His plan we are, mm. and then repent, be willing to repent of that and ask for His infilling mm. of His Spirit to empower us to do and to live the life that He wants us to live. And then He does that. It's a cooperative thing. Mm. But because he doesn't force it on us, but mm. he's available and able to do for us more in a moment than we can do for ourselves in a lifetime. Mm. He can do that mm. if we're available. Mm. You keep mm. saying that word available. I think availability is what God's asking for. Do we give ourselves to yes. his disposal? Yes. Like, here am I, send me. Yes. Okay, Lord, send. And Where I think, you, you know, each to? day that can be true. <laughs> Lord, you know, put in my path someone today that I can minister for in your behalf. And, um, and He will, mm. if we're available, if, we'll, if, we want, if we want to be used by Him, He wants to use us. Mm. Mm. But yeah. He doesn't impose Himself on us. Mm. No. Yeah. God gives opportunities. Success depends upon our use of them. Mm. Mm. You know, that's, that's a big statement that she uses. God gives the opportunities, but what are you going to do with it? Mm. Mm. Go. Mm. Here I am, send me, Lord. Mm -hmm. Here I am, send somebody else. And it's got to be, here I am, send me. Mm. He gives the opportunities mm. for us to go. Mm. Every one of us, we hear those opportunities. Mm. The person in the, in, the, in, the, in the line at the store, he says, say something to them. Mm. Oh, no, Lord, what, what am I going to say? Mm. Just say it. It's okay. Just mm. say it. Mm. All they can say is no. <laughs> Amen? Mm. Give them a book. Give mm. them that. We're, we have it. Mm. We have a beautiful message, yes. mm. you know, yes, and do. so God gives opportunities. Success depends upon our use of them. Mm -hmm. Very simple words, very hard to do. Right. <laughs> when, that, when that opportunity comes, what am I going to do, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah. Send me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trustworthy, Lord, is what we're saying. Mm. Send that person to me. I'm trustworthy. Mm. Are we? Well, not, not <laughs> on our, our own. own. Amen. No. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But that's back to this abiding again. Mm -hmm. Abiding in Jesus Christ. He'll send them to you because you are abiding yeah. in Jesus. Yeah. 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 And that was the turning point for me, was being able to abide in Christ. In other words, take the, my treasures, my career, my hopes, my ambitions, put them in Christ's hands and say, okay, you make the decisions. This is up to you. And yes. he started like... <laughs> amazing what God can do. Okay, well, I just want to thank you all for joining us. I want to thank you, Rich and Pastor, for joining us and Stephanie. And it's just to think about the making of ourselves available to God. Mm -hmm. And like Rich was saying, God gives us opportunities, but what are we going to do with them? So I want to challenge you tonight to choose to answer as Isaiah did, but not just to answer the call, to see the same experience that Isaiah did, to see the power and mm. aw awesome grandeur yeah grandeur however I can't even think of words to mm. describe that vision that he saw of God to realize your need and then he can use you to meet the need for someone else mm. so may God bless you our topic for next week will be love not the world so I'd like to invite you to join us next Monday night at 8 for love not the world We'll see you again next week. God bless you until we see you on Mission TV Live.